What's up, everybody? It is December 2nd, Saturday. Uh, we got a weird day of basketball. Um, the main slate is only five games, but there are games at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 3 o'clock. I am ignoring those games. Only focused on the main slate today, so if you're looking for uh, interesting news for the game that's about to start in the next hour, not going to be coming from this video. Um, if you've watched the recap video from this morning for last night, you'll know that I took an absolute clobbering. But what are you going to do? That's DFS. On to the next one. I did give a shout out in the recap video, but I feel like I need to do it again for my first ever patron. So Thomas Poole, thank you more than you know. It's awesome. It's a really cool feeling. Makes me feel a little weird, but I am honored. So uh, let's get to it because you guys just want to hear about basketball, and I don't blame you. First game up, Cleveland and the Grizz. Uh, Cleveland, huge favorites. You know, double-digit favorites at home. Third highest implied total. Let's get the short list up. Uh, it's going to be tricky to see if... We want to go with Braun tonight. There's a lot of, uh, there is some value already like priced in to the slate with the injury to Jokic. And um, it allows you to, you know, run out. Whatever the hell Plumlee is on Denver, who knows. So let's look at the Cavs. I mean, really, I'm looking at Braun and I'm looking at, Kevin Love, and I'll entertain the idea of Dwayne Wade, but I doubt it. Uh, just because of the potential for blowouts, he's certainly not going to play in that scenario. So, let's pull up the Cavs here. Yeah, last night ended up being pretty rough. But Alec Burks played well, so there's that. Okay. Stupid fantasy lab pop-ups of things that I don't want to see. Alrighty. Memphis. Definitely like Braun. Uh, definitely like Kevin Love. JR is probably in a good spot, but not the kind of guy that I like to run out there. So we will need to take a look at LeBron. You know, I like Kevin Love, but there's basically no chance that I'm using him. It's the only the only possible center for me tonight is Plumley. I think you can make a case for Boogie. And I'm not going to go for Wade. I don't think this is the best fit, luckily. Yeah. Braun up to 12 1. Giannis, $300 more expensive than that. 12 4. Is that a huge jump for Giannis' salary? It was 11 8. Because Braun was more expensive, right? Yeah. Braun was at 12. Okay. Thought so. So let's get down to the main slate, first and foremost. Yeah, um, I'll like Braun because we're basically looking at some sort of combo of Giannis, Braun, or Ben Simmons because I can't imagine taking uh, Boogie or Embiid in cash tonight with Plumlee at 4700 No, So it's going to be interesting. I'll do a build at the end of the video to see where we end up to start. Let's move on to Memphis, who's probably not going to be in any sort of play right now. Ninth implied total out of 10, 97.75. Um, take a look at Dylan Brooks on DK and Jermichael Green, I guess. 
other than that, I mean, they're just, I feel really bad for the Grizzlies. It's such a good franchise. And to be going through this where, you know, Mike Connolly's out and the rest of the team is just, it's so bad. They're going to be so bad for a while. They don't deserve it. Okay, so, yeah, I don't really see much of anything that makes me excited. Ooh, that's not, that's not good. Let's see if 75% works. Yeah, that's not bad. Um... Maybe Jermichael Green. Let's take a look at him. Five game slate, or like you, you kind of got to look at everybody. So Jermichael Green needs 26 and a half to hit value, which he's only done zero times in his last <laughs> seven. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is not take anybody from Memphis which seems like the smartest thing in the world. Ignore the Grizzlies tonight. Next we'll go to Philly. And this one is going to be pretty interesting. <clears throat> Philly and Detroit. Uh, Philly's a five-point favorite at home. 109.75 implied total. It is second on the board. We're going to need some guys from this game for sure. Uh, TJ McConnell is out. So that'll open up some interesting things. Um, ugh, I'm not even trying to fix that. Actually, I should. <sighs> One second, gents. And lady or two. There we go. So I think we need to look at Bayless. We need to look at Reddick, Covington, Simmons, Sarge, Embiid. Although Embiid is eh, just because of the night. But everything's in play. Gonna wanna have, I would imagine, two sixers, if not three. I'm hoping this breaks well. We need Detroit. Detroit, Detroit, I don't know. Whatever the pr proper enunciation is of that. Let's move McConnell over here. Haven't done that yet. There we go. So, yeah, Simmons looks pretty tasty, even though he's 10 4. I'm not as high on Reddick or Covington. Hmm. Man, this would be a really good spot for Embiid. Alright, I definitely want to say Simmons and Embiid. And Reddick, I guess. I might delete these names. I'm just trying to make a note of guys that I do want to go back and look at. <clears throat> so Simmons needs 52. And we know he can get there. He's done it, you know, four out of his last six or whatever, or at least over 50. So I, I don't see any reason to not go with Simmons other than the fact that didn't he, did he lay an egg in that game against Cleveland? I can't remember. I didn't have them, so. What am I doing? Yeah, 30 fantasy points. I'm not sweating it. Most people will, though. It's fine. Okay, Embiid needs 52 as well. He's only done it once in his last, you know, six games. He has been off, um, 
but I don't have a problem with it. If you can get there, get there. Again, I expect to be on Plumlee. And then Redick, who needs 55, he has 5,500 in salary, so he needs 27 and a half. He's done it three times. I don't see any reason to think that he can't do it again. So yeah, I'm going to leave all three of those guys there. I like it. I'm hoping I can get Simmons and Reddick. What's their correlation? Not that I pay too much attention to this, but I'm always happy when they go in the right direction. Sixers. Reddick. Really awful. Okay. So I probably won't have two Sixers. It's probably just going to be Simmons at first glance. Hmm. I don't like that. That's a bummer. We'll see how it comes out in the build. Off to Detroit now. 104.75 implied total. Seventh on the night. comparing Ben Simmons performance against uh, I disregarded the Grizzlies so quickly that I just checked to see how Ben Simmons played against the Cavs <laughs> uh, I'm such a dumbass at least I did that correctly I think I don't know I'm just an idiot you shouldn't listen to me <laughs> all right this <sighs> Get to start it over again. Pistons. Uh, lots to like here. This feels like a Tobias Harris game for sure. This feels like an Avery Bradley game potentially. I don't think any games ever feel like a Stanley Johnson game, but, you know, wouldn't hate it. Luke Kennard is an interesting GPP punt. Oh. I was like, where the fuck is Andre Drummond? Ooh, sorry. Okay, I didn't want him anyway. So let's look at Harris and Avery Bradley. So Harris needs 32 and a half to hit value. He's done that twice in his last seven. He's not been shooting the ball as well as he did to start the season, but he has had some solid games. I think this one plays into his hands pretty well. And um, I definitely want... I think I want to have him tonight if I can. He won't be one of my priorities, but if that's where I end up after my first four or five locks, if he can pop in, that'd be great. And then, might not be as rosterable on DK. Actually, might be more Stanley Johnson on DK, just at 3,700. And then, Bradley needs 27.5 as well. And by 27.5 as well, I mean he needs 27.5. I don't know what as well means in that sentence. And he's done that. He's been right around it for his past three, in a way. <laughs> I don't know. It's not the best. But it's five games late, and I like it. So, Tobias Harris and Avery Bradley, you just made the list. Off to the Bucks. This one's going to be important because we want to take a good look at Giannis. I think we're going to have some scratch to spend. Okay. Bucks have the sixth highest implied total, 105.25. Uh, Kings on a back-to-back. -back. Bucks are 11-point favorites. 
it should come as no surprise we want to look at Giannis, Middleton, and Eric Bledsoe. Not sure if I'm going to be able to do a live before lock or not. Um, just a lot going on today. I don't know what time I'm going to get home to be able to do some of this stuff, but I will uh, tweet out or post on Reddit you know, what my schedule is looking like. These point guard small forward nonsense lineups, you got to get with it, DK. You can't be one and the other, unless you're giving like offense and defense positions, but it's, I don't like it. Sacramento, obviously, um, uh, an amazing place for power forwards. Zach Randolph having a million fantasy points last night. It, I don't get it. Not important. All right, Gary Payton the second is not where he belongs. So let's move him. Damn naming conventions. All righty. So. Well, you would have thought that would have been a big Middleton game, but he doesn't shoot as many threes as you would think. But I still need to look at him. He's at 7,600. He's in for a decent game. So I need to look at Middleton and Bledsoe, definitely. And I'm also going to look at Tony Snell. So i got to take a look at all four of those guys. So let's start with Bledsoe. 7,600. He needs 38 for value. And he's been just playing balls to the wall for his last five. So uh, Eric Bledsoe is going to make the list. Oh, show. Now we're going to take a look at Middleton, who needs 38, same salary as Bledsoe. Now Middleton's done it twice, but he has busted on that four out of the last seven. Am I doing shit math? One, two, three, four, five. Four of the last six he has busted. Two he has gone well above value. But it's the Kings, and the Kings suck, so I have to entertain it. Tony Snell is the one that I'm interested in. I have him projected for 30 minutes. He's $100 more than minimum salary. He is like a 50-50 guy for points, or for his percentage of points, or like stat stuffing type shit. So... Snell needs... Who's blowing me up? Constant. Constant on the, the old wrist. Snell needs 18. He's done that sort of twice. You know, I throw out this 22-minute game. Because if he's going to get 30 minutes, it's going to be close. I think Tony Snell is an interesting punt if it opens up something else for you. That could be... That could be interesting. And then finally, Giannis, who needs 62. Uh, he hasn't hit that number officially in his last five games played. He did get to 61 and a half, but you know, if you're getting upwards of 50, you're you're pretty okay with it. Um, I'm marking him down because I don't think that the Kings really have much to stop him with. Especially on the back-to-back. -back. You do have to worry about the blowout a little bit. How has Giannis's minutes looked in any blowouts? Do they have any blowouts? All right, so they blew out Sacramento a couple nights ago, and he played 26 minutes, but that's where he got to 60. He's gotten big minutes in blowout losses to Dallas. It's really the only blowout. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm good with that. He'll probably be in my. I mean, he'll almost assuredly be in my lineup. 
That'll work. On to the Kings, where I probably won't have anybody because who the hell knows what they're going to do in a back-to-back. -back. I can't imagine that Zebo is going to play 30 minutes again in a back-to-back, -back, coming off of 22 and 20. Wait, hold on. Is it even worse than that? No, he played 19 minutes the game before that, 22 the game before that. So what has he done? Have any back-to-backs before? So here he played 14 and then 22 minutes, so who the hell knows. Here he played 22 and dropped off. So yeah, nothing is in play for me for Sacramento in cash. They have the lowest implied total, 94.25. Um, if you're looking from a GPP perspective, just take the guys that didn't play as much yesterday but do play. I don't... I don't have any advice. I, you, you just shouldn't be taking the Kings. Like, people can go off. They're just not... It's not, like, easy to see that, in my opinion. So, we're on to Denver. And this is the one that matters. Jokic out. Wilson Chandler <clears throat> is questionable. Obviously, Paul Millsap out. Gonna have some... I didn't want to go straight to that tweet. Whatever. This one's going to matter a lot. So Mason Plumlee is just in. Like, I, there's nothing else to see. It doesn't really matter. It's just in. Um, Jokic is out. Plumlee's going to have to, you know, barring foul trouble, he's going to need to play 30 minutes. And at 4,700, he needs to clear, what, 23 so, it's a no-brainer. You don't have a choice. In 20 minutes, he put up 20 points. So, makes you fit everything else in a lot easier. But, everybody has to be in play now. We need to take a look, a deep look at the Nuggets. Now, in a perfect world, um, Wilson Chandler would also not play. And it would just sort of open everything up on the Nuggets. But who knows? And my wife's home. So Nuggets have the highest implied total, 113. They're playing the Lakers. They're four point favorite, four and a half point favorites at home. Um, think about that. They're four and a half point favorites at home without their two best players. And maybe without their three best players. Well, it depends what you feel about Wilson Chandler. Um, it's a good spot. This is going to be a real chalky game. So, nothing jumps out big time, but we need people to get to the rim. And surprise, surprise, that is something that Mason Plumley does. 66% of his shots at the rim. Not that he's much of a shooter. We do want to take a look at Will Barton, who I'll almost assuredly be firing up. And then uh, I think that we just sort of need to look at everybody. Will Barton needs 36 to hit value. He put it up in a big way in his last time out, and he's done that in three of his last five but he has laid some eggs in there. I'm going to take my chances because it's the Lakers. Will Barton's going to make the list. Um, Hernan Gomez needs 20. Which I think is feasible I wouldn't mind fitting that in as my second small forward and I guess I need to take a look at Gary Harris who needs 32 which he's done one two three four times in the last seven so it'd be silly to not look at that and I believe their salaries have changed dramatically Will Barton with a big jump up, and Gary Harris stayed sort of 
low-ish. So what am I looking for? Gary Harris. All the way the hell up here. Okay, so he went up a little bit from the last one, 6,100 to 6,400. But Will Barton... Also a shooting guard, and I'm a moron. Good God. He went from 63 to 72. Okay. So that is that is a little worrisome that he went up $1,000. Um, it shouldn't matter too much, but it is something to keep an eye on. I don't like those big salary jumps. Yeah, uh, the Nuggets are going to be the play tonight for sure. And we're heading to L.A. where I have one that stands out big time for me, and that will be Julius Randle, who's essentially locked in. But I haven't looked at the shot profile yet, so I'm hoping that uh, this all sort of looks good because Randle has been jumping out of my projections big time for tonight. So let's plug in the Lakers. Um, I'm fine with it. The salary is just too low right now. I've got him at 25 minutes. He's only 4,800. He's projected to smash value. I'd also like to take a look at... I'm nervous about Kuzma, so I'm not going to go there. I will take a look at Nance. Actually, I probably won't. Let's take a look at KCP. I think that's the other spot to take a look at here. KCP is 6,300. He needs 31 and a half to hit value. He's done that three times with ease and has been in the ballpark with another one. So uh, KCP for sure is getting put on the short list. I would love to have a part of that. And that's probably it. If, yeah, that's probably it. I'm going to have a lot of this game, I think. If I'm lucky, I'll have KCP, Randall, Plumley, and maybe Gary Harris. But we don't know. I don't know how well the salaries will work out. We'll do a quick build shortly. Last game, Portland and the, and the Pels. I'm not expecting AD to play, which is pretty interesting uh, as usual there's only three options in Portland let's figure out which one is actually good Portland has the fifth highest implied total in the night 10575 they are three point favorites at home which is a weird line that I'm going to double check on right now because I feel like that should be higher with AD out or that line is assuming that AD yeah okay so that line has moved four points That'll do it. 7 and 208. Let's get an update in there and see what that looks like. Okay, so 107.5 implied total. Still fifth, but let's take that look at Lillard, McCollum, and Nurkic. I mean, really only Lillard and McCollum. But, you know. Posterity's sake, you'll do it. I don't know if that's the right word. I don't really know what posterity means. <laughs> um, who the hell are they playing? Portland. New Orleans. Memory's some shite, guys. Yeah, so we're going to look at... I like... We're going to look at Dame. We're going to look at CJ. And uh, we're going to look at Nurkic. Basically, everybody's on play on the Blazers. But they're in a tricky minutes situation. Like, I'd love to take a Minu, but he's not all the way back. So, Dame is at 8,800. He needs 44, which he's done. How many games have they played lately? All right, so he's only done it once, actually. But he's been in the 40s a couple times. 
He's been playing big minutes. Um, and then he'll be able to go up against Rondo and Jameer. So, at the very least, I like him. And then CJ needs 34 to hit value, which he's done twice in his last eight. Been in and around it again, but, a, you know, still not amazing. So these are going to be guys where they're not my priorities. I'd like to have like five or six things locked. And depending on those locks and the amount of money I have left, it could open spots for Lillard or CJ. Um, and then Nurkic, who needs 38 to hit value. And he's done that twice, almost three times. You can do it, but I don't. I don't really like it. Let's head to the Pels, where we're pretty much just looking at Czech Diallo and Boogie. Oh, and Andrew, that, that's rude. 100.5 implied total. It is eighth on the night. We want to know... I mean, I hope Boogie looks like half decent to take a chunk out of... Um, Plumley's ownership. Actually, no, I don't. I just hope that he takes a chunk out of his ownership and he doesn't look half decent to me. That is more what I want. Why am I why am I looking at Boogie in particular? Should I search for him? Probably. It's weird doing this at 1230. Not like 6 o'clock in the morning. I slept in a little bit. 630. It was invigorating okay boogie looks pretty good drew holiday doesn't look bad check diallo looks like a guy that could play I guess that's the best way to describe it. Look, he's at minimum salary. If you need a punt, go check Diallo. He should get 20 minutes. It shouldn't kill you. <clears throat> Let's take a look at Drew. He needs 34 to hit value. He's done that three times in his last four games, actually. You would have to assume that his role would open up a little bit without AD, so I will take a look there. And Rondo, just for just to look, needs 24, which he has done twice in his last four. Two stinkers, one big one in his uh, in the game last night. It's not like Dame's a bit of a turnstile, but Blazers D has been okay. He's not the type of guy that I would expect to just thrash. So that's it for me on on my short list. Let's dump the projections in, see where we get. It should be fun. I'm excited to see uh, what spits out here. I took a look a little bit earlier, but not for any <clears throat> particular reason. Now I'm actually going to do a, a legit build. Or not a legit build, but the bones man we're missing AD Jokic and wait, AD Jokic and Conley from this five game slate that's sad so let's clear this out and boom Dame, Lonzo, CJ, Drew, Brandon Ingram, Stanley, Ben Simmons, Julius Randle, and Plumley. Oh, I still have Randle and Plumley locked. I don't think that's going to change anything out. No, nope, it's still the same. So let's lock Randle and Plumley right off the bat. And I'm going to lock.
What is next? I think it's KCP, actually. I really liked that profile. He's been playing well. Has his salary jumped a lot? Because that's the only thing that concerns me. If I'm taking him before or after the jump. Not really. It's a slow climb. Let's lock KCP and see what happens. Man, the ability to just get a lot of value in your lineup is, is huge tonight. You can fill it in with almost whatever you want. It's going to be a fun night tonight. It's going to be pretty easy to get some deep value. If I put Tobias Harris in, I can probably run two studs. What do I need to do to do that? I would never do this, but this would be a fun GPP lineup. <laughs> Something with Snell and these clowns. Yeah, it's going to be good. Definitely, uh, Mason Plumley and Julius Randle, barring any news, are going to be the first two steps of my build. And then, um, it's going to be tricky to figure out who it's going to be, whether it's Giannis, Braun, or Ben Simmons. <sighs> it probably needs to be Ben Simmons, but that takes me off of Tobias Harris, and I, I think I liked him more at 6,500. Which makes me want to go to Giannis. So it ended up being something like that. And then filling in my point guards. Maybe Eric Bledsoe in a step down somewhere. I've got CJ in at 68. But I can go to Gary Harris at 64. If I could put together a placeholder right now, that'd be nice. I don't want to go Lonzo. But I don't really have a lot of point guard options that jump off the page for me. Which means that I'm probably just going to go with Bayless. <laughs> if I go with Bayless... I get to small forwards, I don't really want. I don't know. It's going to be tricky, guys. All right, that's it for me. I can't figure out where I need to land, but it's not when I need to land right now. I need this to happen at 7.30. Is that when lock is? Yeah. So you get an extra half hour tonight. Lock is at 7.30. Um, short list is here if you need to pause the video. Again. Shout out to Thomas Poole for being my first patron um, when I ultimately blow up and become some super ESPN celebrity. Um, I'll bring you along for the ride as my first like official fan on paper. You're all my fans. I, I, don't, I expect nothing. I love you guys. I don't have fans. I, I don't even know why I'm saying something like that. It makes me sound so ridiculous. Ignore everything that's coming out of my mouth. Just thanks for being a patron. I appreciate it. Like the video if you like it. Uh, like the video if you don't, actually. That, that's even more helpful. Just get those in there. Uh, subscribe if you want. Twitter handle is at the top, along with a link to my website, which I forget to update all the time with these videos and need to go back through and do that. Um, I might start doing a little bit of writing again with um, you know, maybe like a focus on a particular position on big slates. If you guys have any ideas throw them in the comments if you would like to become a patron and uh, have me say your name on one of these videos that'd be really cool you can go to that link that's right up here um, 
and you can you can do that and that would be great i will keep everyone posted on twitter or on reddit well twitter and reddit if there's going to be a live stream which would start around 6 30 just don't know how my day is going to shake out but i will keep everyone posted best of luck tonight and i will talk to you again later